In the early decades of the 20th century, naval battles were dominated by the big battleships of the day. These hulking beasts fought at relatively close ranges, using their large caliber deck guns to pummel the enemy into submission. Aircraft technology was still in its infancy, and no high commanding officers took the concept of launching planes from the deck of a ship seriously. That was until after World War I, when in 1921, Colonel Billy Mitchell demonstrated that a small bomber could sink a huge battleship. The arrival of the Second World War, and specifically the success of the US Navy's Pacific Campaign, really helped solidify the role of the aircraft carrier as a cornerstone of any major navy. The colossal naval conflict between the Japanese Royal Navy and the United States Navy was fought over ranges of hundreds of miles between carriers and their respective air wings. The pitched battle culminated in the Battle of Midway of 1942, when torpedo and dive bombers from the US Navy carrier fleet managed to destroy and sink four carriers of the Japanese Navy. After Midway, the Japanese Navy would go on the defensive and never again mount an offensive campaign against the growing might of the US Navy and its aircraft carriers. After the war, most navies around the world picked up on this paradigm shift in naval strategy and realized the importance of the aircraft carrier. The champion of this new strategy was, of course, the US Navy, who, since World War II, has commissioned and built over 40 aircraft carriers, bringing its total aircraft carrier tally to almost 80 in the last 100 years of operation. But just like the battleships a century ago, the aircraft carrier's future is now called into question as weapon technologies are advancing at a tremendous rate, threatening these massive runways on seas. Ballistic and guided missile technology has evolved to an extent where a small nation can fire salvos of such missiles towards a carrier strike group, essentially overwhelming its defensive umbrella. This means that an aircraft carrier can be defeated with a weapon that can be brought at a fraction of its cost. A ballistic missile travels at a speed of over Mach 4, which is four times the speed of sound, so carrier defenses have to play this constant cat-and-mouse game to defeat these latest advances in technology. That being said, future carriers have a few tricks up their sleeves, as you'll see later on in this video. Despite this obvious threat, in today's highly globalized world, major navies are still finding it hard to ignore the importance of aircraft carriers and their role as a naval power projector on the global stage. That's why so many countries around the world are still hard at work developing their own fleet of aircraft carriers. The ones already developed, few which are in development, and some still on the drawing board. No discussion on the future of aircraft carriers can begin without talking about the new Gerald R. Ford class supercarriers currently being built by the United States Navy. These new ships are planned to replace the Nimitz class of carriers, which many believe are still the best in terms of overall performance by a mile of any other carrier in existence today. The US Navy has planned a total of 10 Gerald R. Ford class carriers to replace its current operational fleet of 11 Nimitz class carriers. With these new carriers, the US Navy plans to continue its dominance over the world's oceans and seas well into the 21st century. One is already operational, two more are under construction, and two more have been ordered so far. The Gerald R. Ford is one of the most technologically advanced ships the world has ever seen. With a displacement of over 100,000 tons fully loaded, it's about half the weight of the entire world's gold reserves. Despite its huge size, it can still navigate the world's oceans at over 30 knots, 34 miles an hour. This means the carrier can cover the distance between its home port in Norfolk, Virginia, to Liverpool on the west coast of the United Kingdom at a little over three and a half days. And it'll be able to do all of this without having to stop for gas. This new carrier is powered by the Bechtel A1B nuclear power plant, which is smaller, requires less manpower to operate, and has a greater power generation capacity of at least 25% than the older Nimitz-class A4W reactors. The A1B reactor heats ocean water that creates steam to power the four main turbine generators of the ship, which in turn generates electricity. This electricity powers the ship's population and all its main systems. Gerald R. Ford's air wing comprises over 90 aircraft. Any flight deck operation with that many aircraft at once has to operate without a hitch, fulfilling its purpose as a floating airport. 
Various modifications of the flight deck have been done, including the island and lower deck, all to improve aircraft handling, storage, flow, and in the service of increasing sortie rate. The carrier is also equipped with a newly developed aircraft launch system using linear induction motors that will replace the old Catavar system used in the Nimitz class carriers, which were mainly powered by steam catapults and hydraulically assisted arrestor wires. This new system is called the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS. The EMALS system allows for much finer control of launch weight while configuring aircraft for launch. This reduces wear and tear on the aircraft frame and the launch system alike, thus ensuring much smoother and efficient flight operations. Aircraft recovery has also been upgraded to use the Advanced Arresting Gear System, which uses simple energy-absorbing water turbines coupled to a large induction motor to provide finer control of the arresting wires. The Gerald R. Ford class of carriers is expected to serve the US Navy until the late 21st century, and with the rate of advancement in weapon technology, the ship has to keep its defenses and offenses up. That means being able to be upgraded over time. Keeping this in mind, the carriers have been completely designed in a modular fashion. This will enable entire portions of the ship to be swappable, so that designers can implement future upgrades simply by removing a section and installing a new one. Given the unusually high procurement schedules of the new Navy warships, which can sometimes take up to 15 to 20 years before becoming fully operational, this is one of the biggest advantages of these new class of carriers. Some of the futuristic technology that is currently under development to go into the Gerald R. Ford class of carriers is directed energy weapons and electromagnetic railguns. These new weapons have the potential to protect the carrier strike group from anti-ship missiles as well as hypersonic ballistic missiles launched from land, air or sea. Current fleet defence tactics use various layers of defences to form a protective umbrella surrounding the carrier strike group. These include the close formation layer of guided missile destroyers, cruisers, frigates, attack submarines and the long-range layer of carrier air patrol, also known as CAP performed by the air wing on board the carrier. These defenses are potent and can keep the carrier safe against most current missile threats. However, as referenced previously in the video, they're not all designed to beat a very large number of threats at the same time, which is precisely the kind of tactics an enemy will employ in the future. Large volleys of missiles can be fired at the carrier, thereby overwhelming the fleet's missile defense layers. This is where the future systems like directed energy weapons and electromagnetic railguns come into play. Railguns have the ability to rapid fire salvos of multiple kinetic energy projectiles against incoming missiles, far quicker than the launch capacity of a guided missile cruiser fielding the Aegis combat system, which is currently the cutting edge of fleet defense. Directed energy weapons where operational will prove to be even more effective. These weapons can track and deliver targeted bursts of energy, such as laser, microwave, or even particle beams. Traveling at the speed of light towards the incoming missiles, they can burn out the warheads at a fraction of a second, even at longer ranges. Combined, both these weapon systems have the potential to make the Gerald R. Ford class of carriers quite invincible against conventional missile attacks in the future. Both technologies are currently in the early stages of development. Another future upgrade to the ship will be an armor upgrade, designed to defeat or at least minimize the damage caused by missile strikes. This technology that is currently under development is known as dynamic ship armor. It works to negate the effects of ionized gas jets created when a shaped charge warhead hits the ship. It achieves that by using layers of strong electric fields within the ship. This technology is also currently under development and will probably take years to be used on an operational vessel. But with the United States, despite having the biggest military budget in the world, with $721.5 billion in 2020, is not the only country building aircraft carriers for the future. Other world powers like the United Kingdom, Russia, China, India and Japan are all in this fray together. Two countries that have already operationalized their next generation carriers are the United Kingdom with their Queen Elizabeth class of carriers and China with its brand new Shandong or Type 2 carrier. We have an in-depth video about the Queen Elizabeth class of carriers on this channel, so if you're interested in knowing more about them, you can check it out by clicking on a link in the description.
The Queen Elizabeth, despite not having such a wide range of advanced tech like the Gerald L. Ford, still features quite a few interesting future technological advances. However, China's aircraft carrier program is the most aggressive. Although not all information about their program is in the public domain, according to some reports, it's believed they'll have five or six aircraft carriers by 2030, which is astounding considering they currently only have two operational carriers. The Shandong or Type 2 carrier just completed its sea trials in late 2019 and ranks in the same weight class as the Queen Elizabeth. Before that, China also launched the Liaoning, or Type 1, in 2012, which is a heavily modified Kuznetsov-class aircraft cruiser originally from the Soviet Navy. The Chinese Navy has already started building two more carriers, designated Type 3 and Type 4, out of which the Type 4 will be powered by China's first marine nuclear power plant. This will make China one of only three operators of a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in the world, after the United States and France. This carrier is also allegedly going to incorporate the ELMS aircraft launch and recovery system, directed energy weapons and railguns. All these technologies are currently being indigenously developed inside China. Out of the prominent world powers, Russia is the only one lagging in terms of current carrier technology. The country only has one aircraft carrier, the 60,000-ton Admiral Kuznetsov. But the ship has been plagued with problems in recent times and the design is from the late 1980s Soviet era. Despite some major refits, the aging ship is a constant embarrassment for the Russian government. To fix this lack of capability, the Russian Navy has proposed a two-pronged approach. Along with the commissioning of supercarriers of over 100,000 tons in the medium term, the naval procurement will be augmented by a fleet of smaller carriers with a displacement of less than 30,000 tons in the short term. Two competing designs have already been pitched for Russia's future supercarriers. The Storm, also known as Project 23000E, and the Lamantin, or Project 11430E. Both carriers are going to feature the latest in marine nuclear propulsion technology and are likely to be equipped with electromagnetic aircraft launch systems as well. They'll also be able to operate the Su-57 5th generation air superiority fighter, which is currently in its final stages of development. It is Russia's answer to the US F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. However, it remains to be seen whether these carrier designs will be accepted in their current specifications or not. Russia is also planning to build two light carriers, which should have been laid down in a shipyard in illegally annexed Crimea in the first half of 2020. These carriers are expected to be operational by 2027 and are based on the design of the French Mistral-class carriers. The idea of developing fleets in light and medium carriers instead of supercarriers is also a future towards which other navies, including the Indian and Japanese, are tending. Supercarriers are definitely bringing a lot more firepower to the table, but they're also extremely expensive to construct and more vulnerable to even more advanced anti-ship capabilities of their enemy. Thus, the loss of such a carrier would be enormous, both in the economic sense and in the loss of life as thousands of sailors are required to operate such a vessel. So according to these nations, why not deploy smaller carrier fleets, each with a complement of 20 to 30 aircraft? This way, even if one were to be destroyed, the effective air power and other offensive capabilities can still be applied over enemies. This idea has recently gained a lot of traction among the navies of other nations, with smaller defense budgets as well. India has already commissioned the INS Vikramadita, which has been in service since the late 2014s, and is currently in the process of building another carrier, the INS Vikrant, with one more carrier planned for late 2020s. Both these carriers are medium-sized, with a displacement of around 40,000 to 45,000 tons. They can also carry anywhere between 25 to 40 aircraft, including the MiG-29K 4th Plus Generation fighter and the indigenously developed HAL Tejas light combat aircraft. Similarly, the Japanese Navy is following the same approach with its Izumo class of carriers. Two have already been commissioned, the Izumo and the Kaga. Both these ships were helicopter carriers that were extensively modified to operate the latest F-35 Joint Strike Fighters, thus becoming aircraft carriers. These ships are classified as light carriers with a displacement of under 30,000 tons. Other navies like the Brazilian Navy, the French and the Italian navies 
are all planning to develop their own carrier of the future within the next couple of decades. Most likely though, despite all these advances in carrier technology and tactics, its role in the future battlefield is going to end eventually, just like the battleships of the past. Thus, some defense insiders have already started questioning the decision of spending billions of dollars to develop supercarriers like the Gerald R. Ford. With rapid advances in guided missile technology and unmanned aerial vehicles, a future Navy may just feature fleets of smaller autonomous ships, just operating UAVs. Until that future is realized, carriers are not going anywhere and will continue to remain a symbol of a nation's naval might for decades to come. That's all we have today. We come up with many other interesting defense and military related videos every week. So if you're interested in these topics, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you'll know next time we upload a video. Also, if you enjoyed our content, don't forget to like this video and share. Thanks for watching.